I get accused pretty regularly of hating Pierre Poiliev, and I don't. I try pretty hard not to hate anybody. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's tempting. He is eminently hateable, but I don't hate him. I hate his policies, I hate the way he runs his party, I hate the way he talks down to Canadians and insults their intelligence. I don't hate the person, just the things he says and does. Complicated. But the reason why I'm so critical of him is because I can see through his nonsense and it makes me so frustrated when people don't. And he gave us such a perfect illustration of his nonsense this week. He's been complaining for months about the interest rates and how Justin Trudeau's failed again and again and again to bring rates down and how high interest rates are destroying Canada and how the Bank of Canada's incompetent because of high interest rates and all this stuff. He's been just endlessly angry about interest rates. So this week, he got what he wanted. The Bank of Canada lowered interest rates and Pierre Poiliev was, predictably, angry. This time he was mad because apparently Justin Trudeau screwed up the economy the other way. So interest rates going up, bad. Interest rates going down, also bad. What does he want? No matter what the Bank of Canada did, Pierre Poiliev would have been angry. I genuinely want somebody to ask him, what did he want the Bank of Canada to do here? Very specifically. Like, does he want them to raise interest rates? I don't think his base would be very happy about that. He just wants to be mad. He's just a rage farmer. All he wants to do is make people angry and then point it wherever he finds convenient, usually Justin Trudeau. And there are very real, very valid reasons to be mad at Justin Trudeau. He is by no means a perfect prime minister. He's done good stuff, he's done bad stuff. There are valid criticisms. But yelling three-word slogans and verbing the noun doesn't really do anything. The real problem, though, is the kind of politics that it represents. I call it vibes-based politics. Because people don't seem to really care about Pierre Poilievre's ideas, he doesn't have any. They just care about the vibes. They're angry, he's angry, the vibes align. And he's going forward with a message that sounds populist, that has populist vibe and veneer, but in reality it's incredibly pro-business, pro-landlord, and pro-everybody exploiting you. He doesn't actually want to help Canadians. He wants to give the appearance of helping Canadians while enriching the wealthy and powerful. You see, he's basically the most obnoxious person you had in your first year poli-sci class. He is incredibly convinced that not only does he know better than everybody, but that the world is also a pure meritocracy. That the people with money are clearly the smartest, the best. And he essentially believes that money is a perfect measure of the quality of somebody or something. Like if something's profitable, it must be good. If something's not profitable, it must be bad. Market economy, baby! He reduces everything he sees to dollars and cents and doesn't think beyond simple budget lines. Like axing the tax. He wants to get rid of the carbon tax. Okay, cool. Then what? Canada has international commitments that we have to meet. So do we want to become a country that just breaks treaties? We are part of a larger international community. We have signed treaties and contracts. Does he want to establish Canada as a kind of country that reneges on deals? What plan does he have to reduce carbon emissions in line with the Paris and Kyoto Accords? Because we have to do that. It's not optional. Especially as climate change continues to accelerate. We had two of the hottest days in history this week. We almost lost Jasper entirely to a wildfire. Between the Fort Mac and Jasper fires, we've lost more than $1.7 billion to wildfires just in the last few years. And that's just in one province. And the massive rainfall in Toronto likely is going to cost nearly a billion dollars as well. The costs add up fast, and Pierre Poiliev has quoted all sorts of numbers about the carbon tax and what it costs, but they all assume that the cost of doing nothing is zero. Recent events make it very clear that's not the case. It's the same with his promise to fire the gatekeepers. He doesn't want to say who he's going to fire or why he's going to fire them. He just says he wants to fire people. But it's weird that he goes dead silent on the conversation about firing gatekeepers whenever there's any sort of regulatory failure, like an E. coli outbreak. Weird how he only wants to fire gatekeepers when it suits him and completely ignores the reasons why we got gatekeepers in the first place. It's to protect the gates, you see. Governments are huge and they administer services to an enormous array of people and they need checks, balances, and protections in order to ensure that those services are delivered properly. Is it perfect? No. But is a total elimination of those checks and balances a solution? Also no. So when it comes to things like axing the tax and firing the gatekeepers, you really have to ask yourself, who benefits? Really, those policies would benefit big emitters and big businesses and folks like real estate developers. It would open the doors for big businesses to be even more destructive and exploitative. And he's trying to send the message that somehow that wealth is going to trickle down to ordinary Canadians. It's good old-fashioned Reaganomics. We've been told that making the fabulously wealthy even wealthier will eventually trickle down to us for nearly 50 years now. At what point do we believe the wealth is finally going to start trickling? Because in reality, the rich are richer than they've ever been and it's only getting worse. And all that Pierre Poiliev wants to do is protect that wealth. He's fighting against the capital gains tax, when in reality, we need to be more forceful when it comes to taxing down large fortunes and preventing mass concentration of Canada's wealth, which is what's happening now. But he's not going to do that. He's just going to axe the tax. 
Then he's going to try to convince you it's what's best for you, when in reality it's what's best for big business. He is the worst kind of politician because he's cynical. He's willing to lie to your face, and every single thing he does is an angle. It's always a plan, it's always a scheme, he's always trying to score points. He's trying to make his opponent look bad, because the man doesn't have a single shred of sincerity. And if you want a really clear illustration of that, I have a very simple question for you. Who are his friends? Has any person from Pierre Poilievre's personal life other than his wife spoken favorably about him as a person? Shared fun stories? Or is he just a weird political robot who doesn't appear to have any sort of life outside of tromping around in suits, adjusting his tie, and whining about stuff? He gives the vibes of someone who would snap their fingers at a restaurant server, and I won't abide by it. I'm not going to sit here and argue that Justin Trudeau is some superior politician. He's fine. But Pierre Poilievre is singularly terrible, and it's hard to overstate just how destructive he would be for this country. He doesn't care about you, not even a little bit. He just cares about getting elected. Don't fall for it.